wait a damn minute. What's good y'all, it's Chenoa from NYC, and today we're gonna get into Infinity Train. That's the Cartoon Network animated series that has since moved to HBO Max. Now look, there is nothing I love more than a cartoon that has the ability to like pull children, adolescents, adults, the elders, like any series or team of writers who can pull that off, you're just royalty to me. Like I love you. Now in general, when it comes to Cartoon Network shows, I feel like I rarely have to second guess like if this is good or not. Year after year, they've shown that they can create shows that can hold audiences of all ages. I mean, look, we got the regular show, Adventure Time, Steven Universe, We Bear Bears, which is definitely my favorite, Clarence, so much more, I'm sure I'm missing some. So me trying to keep up with all these streaming services, I found myself on HBO Max just trying to see what is this because I could have sworn HBO Go was one thing, it's all confusing to me. So I'm on HBO Max, scrolling, 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 and I find Infinity Train. And I was hooked literally immediately. The episodes are really short, so it's very easy for me to binge it. After what I've seen, Infinity train is definitely high up on my list for animated series however we're at risk of not getting any more seasons after the first three so let's get into that today i have some thoughts stick around or this does make new york city new york city streets of new york to hollywood my hood man like i get love for my hood the bronx is still like very gritty she's from new york so. So let's go into the backstory real quick. So this series takes place on a never ending train. This train runs on an eternal track in the middle of nowhere, definitely giving you a little bit of Courage the Cowardly Dog landscape vibe. To date, there's three different seasons. I'm only counting the core seasons that have showed either on Cartoon Network or HBO Max. Each season focuses on a different character or a different duo. First season, we focus on a young lady named Tulip. The second season, we deal with Tulip's reflection, as well as a young boy named Jesse. And for the third season, it's all about Grace and Simon. So there's a bunch of obvious pros to the show. One, nice amount of diversity there. Having a black character in a third season who's actually voiced by a black actress. I love the storylines. I love the themes that they tackle. I feel like Infinity Train approaches certain issues in a way where it's like, okay, this is clearly for a child to understand and like relate to, but it's done in a way that's very honest. At first, it kind of seems like these characters are just on the train at random, especially in the first season. But we learn that whoever is on the train is there to learn a lesson, mainly about themselves, whether it's how they lead their life, whether it's them holding on to trauma, whether it's them maybe having a negative trait that they need to get rid of, or just seeing the truth in something. It's, it's really different for everybody, and I think that's very symbolic, so that's one reason why I like this show. As an adult, it makes me think, if I were on this train, what would be my reason for being on there? Would I be able to, you know, eventually get off? The only way you can get off said train is if your number goes down. Your number only goes down as you begin to learn lessons and I guess mature a bit more to the point where you kind of finally learn your lesson and you're off. Before Tulip gets on this infinity train, we see that her parents are going through some things. Divorce might be on the table. Tulip seems to be an only child. So, you know, she's taking it pretty rough because growing up in a two parent household is all she's used to. And as her parents argue, she's just being caught in the middle. She'll is just stressed she's not here for it she goes on the train and she learns things about herself she goes on one hell of a journey and it's really fun to watch that's one of the most exciting things about this show especially if uh <clears throat> if you're the kind of person who likes to be a little lifted you know a little you know take a little sippy sip or something like that relax on the green on cloud nine this is a nice show to watch when you're in that state of mind it is aesthetically pleasing it's nice to look at eventually tulip figures out what she needs to figure out and shorty's off the train goes back into the real world with a new perspective and she's ready to just take on this new life understanding that you know you're not going to get a happy ending your parents are not going to stay together but they can create a better relationship to make this new idea of family work which i also appreciate you know for the kid that's watching that can relate you're not always going to get a happy ending if you're dealing with that in your family you know blah 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 wonderful on the season two what's really interesting about season one is tulip actually has an interaction with her own reflection who we find out is totally different has a different personality and has felt really controlled by tulip for all of her life after hearing her reflection out tulip decides to leave her reflection behind once we see tulip get off the infinity train and make it back home one of the final scenes we see her walk past the mirror and there's no reflection in the mirror i think that's beautiful because it also brings us to our second season 
season which is my favorite of the three but it's weird because i'm like somebody's gonna notice that like somebody is gonna notice tulip walk past the mirror one day in her life and see nothing in the mirror and think this girl's crazy but i guess they'll deal with that another time so on to my favorite season which is the second one we're gonna call tulip's reflection mt mirror tulip in season two we see her embark on her own journey while running away from people who want her to kind of conform and stick to what she should be which is just a reflection she encounters a kid named jesse from the outside world and his issue seems to revolve a lot around peer pressure now the lessons that jesse has to learn make the plot of the infinity train show more obvious obviously you're here to learn a lesson i feel like tulips were a bit more i don't want to say abstract but you know it was a bit more deep jesse's felt a little surface level we often saw him talking about how back at home he would join in with his bully friends and tease his little brother which felt bad because he didn't want to do it blah 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 definitely something that kids experience when i watched i was just like this is so stupid like why are you bullying your brother for these ugly little kids who you don't know but you know it's a children's show it's an animated show this is not from Adult Swim, so we have certain expectations. Again, season one was a nice little intro to the show and what it's all about. Season two is where it's at for me though, particularly because of MT and her relationship with Jesse. If this were just Jesse's season, I don't think I would like it as much, not because he wasn't an interesting character, it's just, well, maybe that's why, I don't know. His character alone, I don't think would have held it for me. Kind of seeing what um, MT had to go through, I think, her character is definitely someone that a lot of people can relate to in different ways. Now we're gonna move on to season three. And this is where things get really, really wild. Let me preface my season three opinions with this statement. Whenever I find an animated show, right, I'm always caught between wanting to binge it and then dragging it out. So sometimes I'll watch a show and then I'll stop and I'll have like two episodes left and I won't watch it for like a month or two months just because I know that's all I have left. And I'm like, let me not, you know, torture myself and put myself through this now. I'll just watch this like down the line. Very silly because no matter when you watch it, the show's over girl, like get over it, right? I decide to go on Wikipedia, which is my favorite website. And I'm like, okay, how many more episodes do I have? Is this show in production? When can I expect more episodes, right? So I'm on Wikipedia y'all. And I come across this statement. So in August of this year, Owen Dennis, who's the creator of the show, he came out and was like, yeah, of course I wanna make more seasons, but you know, the crew has been laid off and the series is at risk of not being renewed for a fourth season. And I'm like, well, why? Like we just read that like each season so far has had really great reviews, complex themes and characters, like I've mentioned, which is what I like about it. And it's good for kids to watch. So apparently HBO Max was like, all right, like we see a little show, it's really cute, but you know, you're doing a little too much. The themes and the stories are getting to be a little too dark. They claim it was unappealing to children. Now for me, it's hard because you know, you've made a show that happens to include everybody. So something that I'm okay with as an adult might not be appropriate for maybe, I don't know, a little 10 or 11 year old to watch. I don't know what kids do these days, I'm not a kid. So I was already salty because I'm like, if they can't watch it, too bad, right? Okay, so I'm in season three now. We're grooving, taking a different turn. So like I said, season three is all about Simon and Grace. They're two people who are leading this cult on the train a cult of children is kind of just like these like rebellious wild children everywhere obviously the goal on this train is to reduce their number to zero so you can eventually go home and take the lessons that you've learned and apply it to your life the people in this little cult their goal is to get their numbers as high as possible now i thought that they were just outwardly like screw this little concept i'm gonna do what i want to do it's more so of they probably didn't realize that the goal is to get off the train they genuinely thought you know you wanted to stay on the train by doing messed up stuff screwing people over being little nuisances over time we see grace and simon kind of like realize what the truth is what the t is and kind of like rethink their role on the train and if what they've been doing is actually productive, effective, or should have been happening in the first place. Okay, cool. Because there's two leaders of this little cult, which they lead, this happens to be a little bit of, you know, back and forth. You know, the leaders are kind of having opposing ideas, pushing against each other. I can definitely see where the show turned dark out of nowhere. Like, they really just started wilding. I'm like, okay, like, I, I get it, but you're doing a lot. There is a handful of characters that you just killed off in the third season. I'm not no offense, they're not like necessarily major characters, but it's the kind of thing where if you're writing, you would think that the, the writers would like kind of do a, do some, you know when you're watching something and like maybe the writer puts in a little bit of suspense so you think that a character dies, but they don't, like in Scooby-Doo or something, like it's something for kids. They're never gonna kill off Shaggy. They're never gonna kill off like certain characters 100% or something like that. That's what I thought was gonna happen in this show 
and I'm seeing like uh, people die like a six-year-old they have a character named Hazel six years old her best friend is like this big gorilla and spoiler 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 they killed her they killed the gorilla and I was actually confused like I thought that it was just like a, a trick that maybe she like fell under the train and like would come back up and fight she died and I was just like okay like I'm not gonna cry about it but it was a little like rough at the very end more spoiler we see Grace actually make a 180 which was nice to see you know she actually faced some of her trauma some of what she grew up with it kind of softened her to the audience so we didn't really hate her as much we kind of were like okay I see why she's like this Simon on the other hand I thought he would have a 180 he actually descended even more into the conspiracy that he believed and became like super evil like really 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 mean and he died but it was in a way that was so like extreme <laughs> It just, the series itself took a 180. I have no problem with like the dark turn, but it just was very random. And I can definitely imagine like the HBO Cartoon Network board members just looking like what the hell was going on? Like if you've seen the three seasons, you know what I'm talking about. It really came out of nowhere. The first two seasons were nothing like that. The first two seasons were just as deep as the third, just as complex. Definitely giving an audience member, especially if you're on the older side, the ability to be like, all right, like, I see how I relate to this or it just reminds me of this in my personal life you know and that's why we like it not to mention the animation the dialogue how they write you know lines but they really showed out with the last season so I can definitely see why it would be at risk it certainly is not a reason to cancel I think Owen Dennis who again is the writer creator of Infinity Train he said that you know in terms of them getting another season it's definitely all about what they want to do it's all about the numbers are people watching i don't even know if that many people have access to hbo max or care to log in it is definitely worth it if you've listened to this and you're like i know she just spoiled it for me but i still want to watch it i highly suggest you do it is a really good show i could watch this show for like a gazillion more seasons the thing that i love about animation is that the possibilities are really endless like of course you have to pay people that's time and money that's going into you know writing and drawing and illustrating and stuff there's no limit to your pen or your pencil or your crayon i don't know i can't draw but that's super exciting but it would be really sad if this ended after three seasons i don't, I don't think that the writers made a mistake at all it's art you know it was just very unexpected fingers across fingers across i need more seasons here I, I can't leave me with just these little funky 30 episodes <laughs> like I definitely need more but whew, I need some water if you listen this far I definitely thank you for hanging out with me very curious to know what you think have you watched this show did I ruin it to the point where you don't think you can watch it because I just spoiled it for you if so I'm very sorry please give it a chance anyway if you have watched the show do you care about having more seasons do you have a favorite season let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time